Nikola Tesla said, if you want to find the secret of the universe, you need to think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. Our brain pulsates with electromagnetic energy affected by our emotions, our health and our general state of well-being. If an energetic force is struck at the same resonant frequency as another object in a vicinity, the vibrations will cause the second object to begin vibrating. In terms of how you experience the world, the energy and vibration you give off is met and reflected back. We can feel this on an emotional level when we say that somebody's on our wavelength or we feel in tune with the personal situation. Why is this important? Well, if your internal vibration is one of anxiety, depression, anger, the life experience that you have may very well provide you with people and situations that reflect this back at you, thereby reinforcing the feeling and so creating a circuitous negative experience of life. It's a bit like tuning into different radio waves. Depending on what frequency you emit, will decide on what station you pick up. What is clear from modern research, sound can at the very least affect matter. In the 18th century, Ernest Chladny put sand onto a glass plate and vibrated it with a violin. The sand was pulled into creative and beautiful symmetric patterns. This work has been continued with the invention of the cymoscope by John Reed, who uses water as a surface membrane in which to imprint sound and create a digital representation of sound and vibration. Notice the symmetrical shapes and the similarities to those found in sacred geometry and within the harmonious shapes found in nature. According to Gardner Snook of Manchester University, the difference between a healthy cell and a cancerous cell is like two very large orchestras all playing their instruments at the same time, but in the cancerous orchestra, the tuba is horribly out of tune. In the following two clips, you can hear the difference between the healthy pulsations of a yeast cell and the high-pitched frequency of one that is stressed. Notice the distortions as represented on the cymoscope of the one that is stressed. Through the latest experiments using microcymatics, it has been suggested that through the principle of entrainment, whereby a more powerful frequency causes a weaker frequency to synchronise with it, we can excite the membrane of a cell into coherent geometrical patterns. Therefore, if we direct harmonious sound towards our bodies, we are able to bring ourselves into their own optimum frequency. Not only do we vibrate on a cellular level, our consciousness, our thoughts and emotions all have their own energetic imprint. Masaru Emoto, in his book, The Secret Life of Water, exposed water to harmonious sounds, healing thoughts and prayer, as well as dissonant music and negative thoughts. He then froze the water and took photographs of the water crystals. The water that had been exposed to the harmonious sounds and the healing thoughts and prayer created beautiful and geometric uh, water crystals and those that didn't were misshapen or not present at all. Many scientists and philosophers have pondered where does consciousness and our thoughts arise from? Whether you believe this is from a God-given source or from somewhere deep inside the brain, latest research has discovered that it is through our bodily responses to it is in quantum vibrations found in microtubules within brain neurons. Therefore, as we have already found out, if by putting harmonious thoughts into our brains, we can turn our perceptions and our thoughts from chaos to beauty. We've all used music to calm and energize ourselves. I have subsequently discovered that the perfect fifth harmonic as found in Baroque music. It's one of the most healing harmonic arrangements there is, being both expansive and stable. 
By creating a steady rhythm through the use of Baroque music, toning a single vowel, or through the use of a gong, a Himalayan bowl, or through a mother singing a lullaby to her child, the left and right hemispheres of the brain begin to resonate to a steady rhythm, bringing together the more linear left side with a more emotional and creative right. The subconscious and unconscious minds become aligned. Unresolved issues are released and you become more vibrationally coherent and increasingly powerful. When we say that somebody is charismatic, what we are feeling is their personal vibration. When this happens, life starts to flow and those serendipitous moments increase. Why? We cannot solve problems using the same kind of thinking we had when we created them. We can change our thoughts and so change the way we perceive the world. We start to see the world through a truthful lens, being curious of the opportunities presented to us. We respond creatively to situations, taking action that perhaps others might not and perhaps we have not done in the past. It is at this moment, those serendipitous moments that seem so random and elusive, start to become more frequent and expected because not only are we tuned into a more enjoyable radio station, we become less passive and more active at steering our course, whereby we can live a life more expansive and increasingly joy-filled.